Hi, uh, welcome to this video by the Case School of Engineering. Uh, my name is Frank Merritt. I'm a professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. And today, uh, with my colleagues. Hello, I'm Paul Barnhart, Professor of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. Hi, I'm Mike Polino uh, and from the Department of Civil Engineering. Our topic today is we're going to talk about uh, scheduling particularly for the fall semester of the freshman year, but we'll cover topics that are related to the entire freshman year. And with that uh, little introduction, let's get started uh, on our topic for today. And the big one is you probably have received this or will receive it shortly uh, by email, the first year registration guide, this is something between 100 and 200 pages of unbelievably detailed information about course requirements, uh, transfer credits, advanced placement, phys ed, uh, suggested first year courses, pretty much everything that you ever wanted to ask about uh, or know about first year registration is in this guide. Uh, what we're going to do is really cover some of the highlights as they relate to how to plan uh, your schedule for your first year and for your first semester. Okay, the calendar. Uh, this is a little bit on the early side, but uh, through the months of June and July, you want to be thinking about your courses. Uh, and in particular, you want to watch this video, you want to look at the uh, first year registration guide, and you want to come up with a preliminary schedule. And we're going to talk about more of that in detail in just a few moments. Uh, once you actually submit this preliminary schedule online, it cannot be changed until something called the drop add period begins. Uh, and that's uh, in the latter part of August, just before uh, school starts. Uh, what will happen when you come to campus is you will review your schedule with your first year advisor. Uh, there may be other people involved uh, that you want to talk to. Uh, and this is when you should discuss and plan for any changes in your schedule. Between the submission of the preliminary schedule and drop add period beginning, you will not be allowed to change your schedule. Now, once drop add starts, and this is an interesting thing, uh, I think that uh, you probably didn't have this in your high school registrations, uh, but what happens in this period, we can use the online computer system called SIS, Student Information System, and you can go in there and you can change courses. You can drop courses, add courses, which is why it's called drop add. Uh, you can pick uh, courses that are in different time slots. This is when the changes are made and you will have until the Friday of the second week of school to make changes. And I will point out, and this will come up uh, several times later in our talk, that uh, classes which might be closed, and by closed I mean that the enrollment limit has been reached. As students drop out, courses that were closed may open up, so you want to keep your eyes on uh, SIS and any particular courses that you're interested in. Okay, we'll start now with do you have credit for courses? Uh, the most common one is advanced placement. Okay, and we're going to talk about some details of that. Uh, there is also IB, or International Baccalaureate, uh, and there are uh, courses which can be transferred from another college or university. And you can use these to satisfy your general education core or major requirements. Okay, uh, it is your option, and this is one of the questions we most commonly get, should you use that credit or should you take the course over again? And there's an excellent statement which I copied straight out of your first year registration guide, and I'm in agreement with it. We encourage students who do have credit 
to advance and take the next course in the sequence. Uh, particularly advanced placement, this is a nationally normed exam. If you're passing this, you're satisfying national requirements in that subject area. So if you satisfy that, you should feel comfortable in moving ahead to take the next course in the sequence. Uh, I know some of you are potentially uncomfortable. You may say, well, my high school didn't have a really good course in that area. I feel like maybe I'm behind. And this is actually where you can use the drop add period. Uh, you can actually attend both courses, the one you're getting credit for and the next course in the sequence, and then decide which one is a better match to what you know and have learned in your previous courses. Okay, now some details. Okay, this is going to relate more to the advanced placement. Uh, the uh, IB and college transfer credits are usually dealt with separately and we really won't go into detail of those today. Uh, probably the most common one or one of the most common ones is the calculus AB. If you get a score of four or five, you would get credit for Math 121. We're going to go over the details of the math sequence in a moment, but Math 121 is going to be single variable calculus. If you took the advanced placement calculus BC and got a score of four or five, uh, that would give you credit for both Math 121 and 122. Math 122 now is multi-variable calculus. Another common one is chemistry. If you took the chemistry AP and got a score of four or five, you would get credit for chemistry 111, and you would typically proceed to take the next course in the sequence, which is engineering 145, chemistry of materials a very, very common advanced placement credit is computer science. If you take a four or five, you would get credit for EECS 132, which is programming in Java. And we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about the programming uh, requirement in a few moments. And then uh, probably the other very common area is physics. If you took the AP Physics C, which is mechanics, and got a score of four or five, you would get credit for Physics 121, which is our mechanics uh, physics course. Uh, for those of you who took the Physics C, electricity and magnetism, and got a score of four or five, uh, you do not get out of the corresponding Physics 122 electricity and magnetism course, but you do get credit for three hours of physics and this would show up on your transcript and you would probably want to talk to your advisor about how this would best be used. Now, how many courses should you sign up for? Uh, this is a, probably a pretty good template uh, you should probably plan on taking three technical classes. Uh, I say a humanities and social science class. You will see this um, many, many times in the first year registration guide. We have many students and programs that will simply pass on the humanities social science class in their first semester. You're not required to take one every semester. You will be required to take a Sages freshman seminar. And the registration for that is different than the math, the science, the physics, et cetera, courses that you're going to register for first. With the Sages freshman seminar, you will submit a list of a number of courses and then undergraduate studies and uh, the Sages people will actually assign you to one of your selections. And there is physical education. We're going to talk about that requirement in just a few slides. Oh, and let me mention here, uh, take 
yet you will typically be taking 14 to 19 credits your first semester. Uh, we often recommend that you take a lighter first semester just simply to give you a little bit more time and less uh, stress in adjusting to that transition from high school to college. Now, what courses should you take? This is where we're getting down to the real nitty gritty and it will depend in uh, part upon your major, your intended major, because you don't declare a major until later in your freshman year, uh, and any AP credits, et cetera, that you might have. Uh, math, you're probably going to be taking a math course every one of your first several semesters. Uh, it is something that is just ubiquitous to engineering. Uh, physics and chemistry are very, very common. Uh, you're going to require two semesters of each of them. Uh, again, you'll probably see at least uh, one of those in your first semester. And then computer programming. Now, there are differences. Some programs will recommend you take physics maybe before computer programming. Others will recommend computer programming before physics. Everyone recommends completing your chemistry. Uh, and everyone recommends taking math. So let's take a look at these sequences where you can figure out where you're going to be uh, wanting to take your courses. OK, math, the most ubiquitous. The math sequence is typically math 120, 121, 122. Uh, and then there are a few options here. Okay. The Math 120, you would be determined if you would take that based upon the Math Diagnostic course. Uh, math 121 is your single variable calculus. Uh, you could get out of it uh, depending upon your AP uh, calculus AB score, Math 122. I didn't mention previously Math 223 or 227. Uh, Math 223 is vector calculus, uh, and it turns out Math 227 is an enhanced version of it, uh, and you might be invited to take Math 227. Uh, it's a very good course, uh, and it is, and I'll quote it here, intended to provide superior preparation to strong students in math, science, and engineering. I have students that have taken it. They tell me that they really like it. And it has a really, really nice review of everything that you should have learned in Math 121 and 122. But Math 223 and 227 basically cover vector calculus. Uh, and then finally, Math 224 has uh, differential equations. I, I don't know if my colleagues have anything extra they want to add about the math sequence here. But we usually recommend uh, if you've got AP, IB, or transfer, go to the course uh, with which best matches your proficiency and skill level. Chemistry. Now, uh, you, you've noticed from the topic of uh, courses uh, or of majors, what well, we're talking mechanical, aerospace, civil, electrical engineering, computer science, computer engineering. Uh, we usually don't require uh, anything beyond basic chemistry requirements. An exception might be pre-med. If you're a pre-med student, there's special advising uh, and other considerations. You'd, for example, probably take organic chemistry later. But Chemistry 111 is your basic chemistry course. It's entitled Chemistry for Engineers. Uh, this is the one you can get out of if you took the chemistry proficiency and got a score of 4 or 5. And then there is Engineering 145. Uh, this is something you could potentially take in the fall semester. Uh, it's the chemistry of materials. You'll learn how things how materials are actually made, how strong they are, what properties they have, uh, how uh, they can be used. Uh, so 
uh, very interesting course, and a number of you will uh, move directly to 145 in the fall. Okay, physics. Uh, this is a little bit like the math uh, sequence in that we have an enhanced possibility. Most students will take physics 121, uh, mechanics, and 122, electricity and magnetism. Uh, a subset of students will be invited, and notice invited, to take physics 123 and 124. And basically, this is for students who are more interested in physics, and, and it will include additional material, uh, including fractals, chaos, etc. Uh, again, I've had many students who have taken it. Uh, they really like the course, uh, but uh, either course sequence will satisfy the requirements in your major. In electrical engineering and computer science, and I'm sure in mechanics, uh, I'm sorry, in me mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering, civil, you get the same basic background in both sets of courses. Uh, you might get a proficiency, I, and there's a little note here. Uh, if you got the physics mechanics proficiency, if you get invited to and decide to take the physics 123, you actually give up your proficiency credit. So that's a little subtle thing. If you're in that group that's invited to do the enhanced uh, sequence and you do have the AP, that one you may want to really talk to your freshman advisor when you get on campus programming. Now this one is not in the FYR guide. Uh, what happens is if you take the computer science advanced placement, okay, and you get a score of four or five, you get credit for EECS 132 programming in Java. The requirement for engineering students is you must take either the programming in Java course the EECS 132, or the Engineering 131 Introduction to Programming in MATLAB. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with MATLAB, it's a very commonly used scientific package. It's sort of a engineering toolbox. It's got all kinds of math routines with specialization, excuse me, to all kinds of engineering applications. It can do great graphics uh, and many, many of our upper class courses use MATLAB. I know mechanical engineering has multiple courses based upon MATLAB. Electrical engineering has also. Uh, do you use it a lot in your yes, civil courses? Also in civil engineering we use MATLAB. In the primarily in the upper level junior and senior level courses. Okay, so lots and lots of application of MATLAB in your upper class courses, but you received uh, AP credit for the programming in Java course. A number one question is do you need to take the programming in MATLAB course in addition? Uh, most of our students tell us that they can pick up the MATLAB very, very quickly as long as they understand algorithmic programming. So you're only required to take one of the courses or get credit for one of the courses. Now, since I'm from electrical engineering and computer science, I will mention, I know, uh, we do go on and take even more programming courses. Uh, and for those of you who got credit for the uh, programming in Java course, uh, and in particular computer engineering and computer science courses, you may want to consider EECS 233 data structures. Uh, it's not a rush, but it is a prerequisite for all of the upper class programming computer science and computer engineering courses. So, that's again one you may want to talk to your advisor about when you get on campus, and I will note uh, that there is a URL listed that has more information about the differences 
between the programming in Java course and the programming in MATLAB course. But bottom line is if you've gotten credit for the 132 programming in Java, you do not need to take the Engineering 131 programming in MATLAB course. And I think this basically said what we were just talking about. Uh, it's a very common question. Uh, I usually tell my students, if you've already got credit for Java, you don't need to take the MATLAB course. Take a look at another course or take a relaxed first semester, a lighter first semester. Uh, phys ed, uh, this is actually described in great detail in the FYR guide. Uh, we offer phys ed courses in increments of either a half a semester or one entire semester. Uh, these half semester courses are either first half of the semester or the second half of the semester or it might be something like a varsity sport which takes the entire semester. Uh, if you are in uh, marching band or you're in a varsity sport, uh, you can receive phys ed credit uh, and there are special instructions for you in the first year uh, registration guide. Uh, you don't need to take phys ed at all your first semester. The requirement is simply that you complete two semesters by the time you graduate. Uh, many of the phys ed classes fill up early, uh, but watch during drop ad. Oftentimes classes that you're interested in uh, will open up, although I don't think I've ever seen the fencing class not full. Uh, that's one of our most popular classes. And just as a suggestion, uh, which actually was made to me by many of our freshmen, uh, take phys ed in the first half of the semester, uh, and in the second half of the semester, you'll probably be very busy with papers, reports, all kinds of course activities, uh, and you might need a little extra time in the second half. Okay, now we'll look at it by discipline and uh, let's see, I guess we didn't put these in alphabetical order, so why don't we start with civil engineering? So for the civil engineering uh, fall semester of the freshman year, um, what we recommend is that you start with your uh, first course in the SAGES sequence uh, during the semester, and in addition to that, um, starting the math sequence of you know, your calculus one through three um, and differential equations. Now, if you're coming in with AP credit at this point, um, you can you know, possibly not take the math course at this point, um, lighten the load during that first semester. Um, but if you don't have the Calc 1 credit coming in, we highly recommend that you start the Calculus 1 during this semester. Um, and in addition to this, um, we recommend the computer programming class, ENGR 131. So this is the MATLAB-based course, um, and we tend to use MATLAB um, primarily in the upper level uh, civil engineering courses. I wouldn't say extensively, but we certainly do use it. Um, and then also starting the physics sequence, um, but that's only if you have not taken computer programming, um, uh, or sorry, if you're not taking computer programming at this point. Uh, most of our students will wait to take the general physics one uh, for the spring semester of the freshman year. Uh, and then also the Chem 111 course we recommend during this semester. Um, and then starting the humanities and social science courses. Um, again, this is another area where you may not necessarily have to take your humanities or social science course uh, during the sem this semester if you want to lighten your load. Um, and then also starting the physical education um, uh, course at this point. Uh, another option for our students, at least for those of you who know you're going to major in civil engineering starting right at the freshman year, uh, is you can enroll in our ESIV 160, uh, Surveying and Computer Graphics, um, which is a required course for uh, civil engineering students. It's typically taken during the fall of the sophomore year, um, but you can certainly also take it as a, as a freshman. Um, kind of looking more broadly at the entire freshman year um, for civil engineering students, you can see that it's kind of a continuation of the SAGES um, uh, courses the mathematics courses and the physics, um, and then the second chemistry course for engineering. 
Um, another thing I would recommend during the freshman year, if you want to get more involved um, with the civil engineering students and uh, getting involved with the Department of Civil Engineering, uh, is start to attend our American Society for Civil Engineering, that's ASCE student group. Uh, they typically hold bi-weekly meetings on Friday during the lunch hour. Um, invite practicing civil engineers from the Cleveland area to come in and give talks. Um, it's a good way to get um, acclimated to uh, the civil engineering uh, curriculum, meeting other students, and also learning a, a bit more about civil engineering. Uh, another student group you might want to get involved in uh, with is the Engineers Without Borders group. Um, we typically have a number of civil engineering students who participate with this group. Um, and that's in part due to the fact that a lot of the Engineers Without Border projects um, are very much civil engineering related. All right, this is the uh, Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Fall Semester for first year students. There's a lot of commonality with the civil engineering program in that you have to take a SAGE's first seminar. Um, also, you will take one of the math sequences starting off most likely with Calculus 121, though you could place out into 122 or 123. And as Frank Merritt mentioned, take the math class you're able to get through quickly and don't repeat classes you can place out of with AP credit is our best advice. You'll again take Chemistry 111, the Principles of Chemistry for Engineers. And in our department, we prefer you start off your first semester with Physics 121 and General Physics. Or if you haven't got as far as Math 121, uh, we'd encourage you to take Engineering 131, Elementary Computer Programming in MATLAB. In our department, we really place a lot of emphasis on MATLAB programming. Um, if you do take the uh, AP credit and place out of the Java programming class, that's fine. But you'll pick up MATLAB programming quickly because our next um, course in a sequence in your sophomore year is EMAE 250, which is numerical methods, and it's all done with MATLAB programming. It'll become quite proficient in a very short time. We also have a FISA requirement, as do all majors. And my personal advice is if you can, try to get the FISA requirement out of your way in your first year or two. It becomes quite a burden to be taking a phys ed class when you're a junior or senior, when your time is very short and the course demands are quite high. So if you can, get it done in your first year. In terms of the course sequences for the whole first year, uh, the spring semester has, again, a second stages class. Your next math sequence course, which would either be, if you took 121 in the fall, it would be 122 in the spring. Presuming that you've gotten your Chemistry 111 done in the fall, you'd advance to Engineering 145, the Chemistry Materials course in the spring. We're going to have you take the Physics 122, General Physics of electro Electricity and Magnetism in the spring itself, and then you'll catch your Engineering 131 Elementary Computer Programming in your spring semester for our curriculum. And we finish it off with, again, one more semester of Phys Ed activity. And it'll finish your freshman year. OK, great. And I'll talk now about electrical engineering and computer science. But again, notice how similar it is to the first semester for civil, the first semester for mechanical, first semester for aerospace engineering intended majors. Uh, we start with the SAGES first seminar. And I will point out uh, later when you get the list of uh, SAGES first seminar courses that there will be about 30 uh, first seminars which have engineering topics uh, and I will encourage you to look at those. Uh, again, picking the appropriate math course in the sequence. Uh, probably 121 or 122 are the most common. Uh, pick the one based upon your uh, placement credits. Uh, most of the students in electrical engineering and computer science will probably take either EECS 132, which is your Java programming course. If your intended area is computer engineering or computer science, you will want the Java course. Uh, if you're going to major in electrical engineering or systems engineering, uh, you would uh, normally take then the programming in MATLAB course. So there's a little bit of a decision there. But if you've got the credit uh, for the Java, there's no sense in repeating, uh, or rather, repeating a programming course and taking the Engineering 131 course. If you've taken the 131, 132 equivalent, uh, so that you have an opening in your first semester, then you can consider going to the Physics 121 uh, course. Uh, if you're going to be computer engineering or computer science, 
uh, this might be an opportunity to put in the EECS 233 data structures course. Uh, notice that we have, just like uh, all the other engineering majors, the Chemistry 111, Principles of Chemistry. Uh, you may uh, decide to take a Arts, Humanities, or Social Science course. Uh, and of course, my colleagues have made the comments about uh, phys ed. Usually, you'd like to get that done early in your case career. Uh, the bigger picture, SAGES both semesters. And I will point out and mention that the SAGES first seminar, the instructor of that course is also your freshman advisor. And you will get to know that person a lot better uh, as soon as you come to campus. Uh, notice we've got the math sequence. You're going to be taking a number of math courses. There is a little bit more flexibility in the next row. Uh, depending on whether you're computer engineering, computer science, electrical engineering, or systems and control. Uh, one's focused upon the programming. Uh, the EECS 132, engineering 131, if you did that in the first semester, then you would typically take your physics 121 requirement in the second semester. Or uh, you might actually, for one reason or another, uh, take the physics in the first semester and programming in the second. Uh, this might be more common if you got AP for uh, Physics 121. Uh, we've got the Physics of Chemistry followed by the Chemistry of Materials course. So we have our Chemistry row and then finally Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. Uh, maybe another Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences or maybe the Physics uh, 2 course. You can see we've got a little bit more flexibility, uh, but we also are offering four different degrees in EECS. And actually, we're getting ready to offer a fifth degree in Data Sciences. Uh, and then finally, the Phys Ed uh, course uh, or courses. Now, all of that is a lot of work. Uh, and my advice at the very end is allow time for things other than classes. Don't overcommit yourself. You're going to find that there's an awful lot of time uh, that you could spend on homework, uh, recitations, working in the lab, etc. But allow time for athletics. Uh, there are intramurals, there's varsity athletics, there's all kinds of stuff. Professional organizations. We mentioned the American Society for Civil Engineering. We've got the American Society for Mechanical Engineering. Uh, we've got multiple societies in uh, electrical engineering and computer science, IEEE, ACM. Student organizations. Some of these can be really fun. Uh, we've got the mini Baja. Uh, in uh, EECS, we've got Hacker Society. Uh, which is into all kinds of programming and programming applications. And they'll go out and even do programming and hacking in the community. Some of you are coming here because you want to get involved in research right away. That can be done, okay? But you just can't do everything. So allow also a little time for relaxation and a little fun. Uh, you know, we do have professional sports teams. We have got all kinds of museums. We have, heck, you can even go sailing on the lake. We've got all kinds of great things that you can do. You know, we look forward to having you on campus this fall. Um, you know, one of the great things about uh, Case Western is you get a lot of direct interaction with uh, the faculty members with, within each of the departments. Um, you know, in terms of research, I, I also recommend maybe not the freshman year, but maybe starting from the sophomore year. In fact, I have. Um, a number of undergraduate students, three this summer, uh, working with me uh, in the laboratory. Um, uh, and in addition to that, um, I would also say in terms of advising, you know, if you want some additional recommendation from particular engineering departments, you know, feel free to contact the department chairmen and ask to sit down with one of the 
um, faculty members within the departments, uh, maybe within one of the specialty areas that you're um, looking into. For instance, I'm in structural engineering. Some students know from freshman year that they're interested in it. So, you know, feel free to contact uh, department chairman. And finally, I'd like to say them along the same lines. Please don't try to get too bogged down in your coursework. There are other things in life that are just as important. The people you go to school with will become your lifelong friends. You'll know them for 30 and 40 years to come. Your professors are your first contacts in the profession. They'll become your professional contacts in your first job and subsequent jobs. They, too, become your lifelong friends. And for some of you coming to Case, you're going to meet your future spouse. All those relationships take time. Give yourself some time. Thank you.